Hi. Now, today I'm going to be discussing the concept of half-life and half-life particularly in the concept of radioactivity. And if you watched my previous video, I discussed how radioactivity works, but I left the question open is, well, what is the rate of alpha decay, beta decay and gamma decay? And that's a concept called half-life. But before we discuss half-life, I want to give you a little of a demonstration. And what I have here is a measuring cylinder and some beer. And uh, if you may or may not be aware that when we pour beer, we get this layer of foam often referred to as the head of the beer. But of course, over time, that foam size decreases. And the question I have for you is, is what is the rate at which that decreases? Is it a linear decay or is it a exponential decay and so forth? And what we're going to do is we're going to pour some beer in here and then what we're going to do is measure the size of the foam by just simply looking at the gradations of my measuring cylinder and we're going to do that with respect to time and then what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the data. So let's have a look and we'll start the process going. So let's start the timer. And let's leave it on its own for a moment. So I think we've done a reasonably good job of measuring the time now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the variations in the gradations here and plot that with respect to time and we're going to put that into Excel. So let's have a look at how that comes about. So here I have a table that represents my data that I collected in Excel. So you can see I have the time, I have the bottom level, I have the top level, I have the difference, which is of course is the height of the foam that I have. But now let's have a look at what the graph looks like when I graph this. So here I have my overall graph of the foam and you can see it does not decay at a linear rate, it curves. So this curve, if I try to draw as best as I can a curve, you can see that we have this decay rate that looks something like this. Now this is often referred to as a exponential decay. Now what do I mean by that? Well, in this case, there is some sort of constant value by which this seems to decay at a rate. And that is the concept in our case of a half-life. Now, what do I mean by half-life? Well, let's say I started this value up here and this is going to be my 880 over here. And let's have a look at roughly the time it takes to get to half that level. So that's about 44. So that's going to be about here. Now the time of that, if we tap that down like this, you can see it's approximately, let's say 65 seconds. Now it's not precise, my curve here isn't really truly representative of the dots, but you get the point I'm trying to make. Now let's take the time it takes for half of this 44 to go down. So now we jump down to 22 and 22 is over here. Now again, this is a rough estimate. And if we tap that down like so, you're gonna see I'm going to get a value of approximately 130. Do you notice that we have a lot actually disappearing in 65 seconds, but in the next 65 seconds, we actually get half of what we had previously. So the half-life is the time it takes for half to decay from the previous levels. If we then continue to the next slot and half of 22 is 11, we're gonna get a value that's roughly around here. It's not very precise, of course. And if I put the dotted line down like so, you can see I'm gonna get a value of around 180. Now this is about 50 difference and, and that's clearly because of my graph not being precisely drawn. So in many respects, this models radioactivity pretty well. We have a half-life of our foam. Now, our foam, of course, is consistent of bubbles, and those bubbles are popping, and therefore the foam reduces in size. Now, when each of those bubbles pop and release their gas, um, that's a random event. It's spontaneous. We don't know when that happens. But nonetheless, we find that, that over time, that decays in you know that classic uh, neg um, negative exponential graph and ha therefore has a half-life. Now some would argue if I start off with let's say 500 particles and over let's say its half-life 
250 transmutate. Then why do not the remaining 250 transmutate in exactly the same time? Well, there, I want you to think about it this way. Imagine I have 500 particles and over its half-life, half of it decays, and I, I remember have 250. Now let's say I put that away. Let's say now I have 250 particles to begin with, and I measure how long it takes for half of it to decay. I'm going to get the same time. Now, clearly, I started with 250 and have gone to 125. Now, over here, I had the second stage of my 250, and clearly, they're going to be decaying at the same rate as this. In other words, it's independent of how much has decayed beforehand. So it's not a linear relationship of the decay rate, but a negative exponential relationship. So that's one way of thinking about it as to why you don't get all of them decaying in exactly the same amount of time in the second phase. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Till next time, bye for now.